In this video, my friend Brett Day comes over from Oklahoma City and we head out at Odark 30 in the morning to go photograph some elk and some awesome landscapes. We showed up just in time to find this field populated with elk. It worked out perfectly that Brett had the new Canon EOS R6 with the 600mm f11 lens and I was able to get my hands on it for a second and take this shot. So this morning, I brought my Mamiya RB67 out here. Got Portrait 800 in it because uh, there's some elk here behind me. We've been shooting the elk. Uh, I think I might have a couple cool landscapes that have the elk in them, so that's why I brought the 800 speed film. I've just found a regular landscape looking back this way, the morning glow, and a little bit of atmosphere. So I'm gonna try to shoot that. just metered several places. I think I'm gonna go within eighth of a second at F8. Or maybe slow that down even because the elk aren't in the shot here. So let's see. So I can get F16 at a half a second. So I think that's what I'm gonna try. Slide. Double check our focus here. And there we go. It was really quite the experience to hear these big bull elk bugling in this valley. Listening to the sound of it reverberate through the valley off of the bluffs was really kind of a haunting experience.
As we packed up and started heading back to the truck to make our way to our landscape location, a group of five or six Shelby Cobras drove up, and of course we weren't going to let that opportunity go unphotographed. Midway through the morning, we found our way to the campground. After a quick stop at the facilities, we were ready to hit the trail on our hike and get some awesome landscape photos. So Brett and I got our elk shooting out of the way earlier this morning and we've come out here to the trail and found our first cool little scene here. Finished off my Royal Portrait 800, now I have a Royal Portrait 160 in and uh, we're gonna shoot down this river here. Metered it out with my little spot meter here and I ended up settling on an eighth of a second at F11 with the 160 film. So we'll see how this goes. So we've gone a little bit further downstream now and found a really awesome scene here behind me. And uh, so I've just shot it with the Portra 160 at F16 in a quarter of a second because I wanted to get as much depth of field as possible without stopping down too far. I think this one's going to be really cool. I love the way that the trees are isolated up against the bluish gray wall behind it. And I've set up the frame in such a way that it just cuts the sky out above the trees behind me here. So hopefully there should be no hot spots and everything should be really nicely lit and this reflected light in the shade here. Okay, so we've come to this spot here. I'm not sure how exactly well it's gonna work. Um, decided to give it a shot anyway, just to see how it works out. But uh, I'm gonna try an F16 at an eighth of a second. I'm trying to incorporate this tree here coming over. I don't like that second one that's going out towards the top of the frame, but I've got it in the, in the frame anyway, just to see what happens. There's a little bit of river left in the bottom. And that's kind of my thinking behind this one, just to get the color in the scene. And there's a little bit of a wind in the river, but I'm not sure how it'll work out. But we're here, so may as well give it a shot. So we've continued on our hike and found some really cool scenery here. Done the 250 millimeter on my RB67 now and got a really cool composition framed up here. We have these two trees on either side kind of arcing up over the river and the color is great on them. The cloud covers back so the light's nice and diffused. It's just a really cool thing. Um, metered it out and I've set it at a 15th of a second at f16 and uh, on the tripod obviously. So see how this thing goes. When photographing this scene, something in the back of my mind told me I should get the K1 out and get a digital shot of this just in case. Boy, am I glad that I did. This shot on the film camera ended up being plagued by motion blur. I don't know if there was a wind gust or what, but 
Something shook the camera during the exposure and I am super pumped that I got the backup shot with my K1. At this point in the hike, I was starting to realize that perhaps carrying my Mamiya RB67 with two lenses, my K1 with a couple of lenses for it, and my Sony a7 III with its lens was starting to get to be a bit of a pain. We were just about back to the truck and really feeling ready to get in it and drive home. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out and I really appreciate it. So until next time, we'll see you soon.